All right, we're going to do a measurement today. Um, uh, a viewer pointed out um, a feature of this uh, multimeter that I have that I didn't even know it did. So I was trying to measure some um, 500 mega ohm resistors, uh, which I got on uh, AliExpress. And so uh, I tried to measure them and they, it was out of range. This meter couldn't, couldn't, could, oops. Oh, let me do that again. I always push the wrong button to get the backlight. Okay, there we go. So if you look really, really close though, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there's a tiny little 3.00. It says mega ohms and it's a tiny 3.00, which means it can only measure up to three mega ohms. So certainly not 500 mega ohms. So uh, I went and used a bunch of electrometers and stuff to measure this 500 ohm. And uh, he pointed out, he says, no, your meter should be able to do that. So if you go into the range button, okay, and you do manual range, um, you can actually get it to go into an upper range, which is even more, uh, even more mega ohms. Now, when you move up into the super high mega ohms, they stop using units of ohms. They start using uh, uh, measurement units of Siemens. Um, and um, so we'll talk about that, but let's go ahead and measure the, um, measure this 500 mega ohm resistor here and it's going to measure about uh this one's measuring about 1.1.85 okay so how do you convert uh you take 1.8 oops you take 1.85 and it's nano nano siemens so you say nanos which is 10 to the minus 9 okay does that show up and then you take the uh, inverse of that. So it's 540 mega ohms, 540 times 10 to the six, which is mega ohms. So, um, so that's what this resistor is. I didn't make an accurate measurement, but you get the idea. Okay. I, I think they were generally measuring about 1% off. So um, I, I, I'm setting on a, a wood substrate here, which also has resistance. So obviously that's a bad thing to do. All right. So, um, Let's talk about the Siemens. So Siemens is a measure of conductance. So there's, there's resistance and there's conductance. So resistance, things don't like to go through resistance, but conductance, things like to go through conductance, right? So uh, engineers in their, in their great wisdom uh, <laughs> have units of ohms for resistance and units of one over ohms for conductance, okay? And then they decided to put a different name on it, Siemens. So it's one over ohms. Just think of it as one over ohms because and it's, it's times 10 to the minus nine, uh, one over ohms. That's what it is. Kind of weird. All right. So uh, I thought that we would take a look at some other things though, which might be fun for a video. All right. So let me, let me zoom down here a bit. So here's a DVM, a little triplet uh, MM200, okay? I'm going to take my uh, meter here, which is measuring in nano, nano Siemens, and I'm going to measure uh, the voltage that this uh, Agilent's putting out. It's putting out 0.49 volts to make a measurement. But look at the measurement. The measurement's 90.6, 90 90.55 nano Siemens. 90.55. Okay, let's do the calculation. Uh, 90, oops. 90.55 nano Siemens, okay, is 11 mega ohms. So the input resistance of this meter is 11 mega ohms. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's go measure some other ones. All right, I've got some nice meters here. I've got a Hewlett Packard 34410A, 3301A, 34401A. I'll get it right sooner or later. These are super popular, super, super duper. Recommend you get one of these. And this is a Keithley 2015. Uh, the Keithley is a little bit better instrument. Yeah, that could be debated, but I think it is. Um, let's go ahead and measure the input resistance of the, let's see if I can bring my other meter up here. Is that all in camera? Ooh, look at that, ooh, professional. Um, so let's measure the input of this meter. It's measuring uh, 0.463 volts, but look, it's 99, 99.8 nano Siemens. Okay. 
let's do the calculation. 99.8 nanosiemens is 10 megohms. This is a 10 megohm input, okay? Now, this you can change. So if I go into the menus and I go down to the measurement menus, there's something called input resistance. And right now it's set to 10 megohms. Hey, that's just what we measured. We measured 10.02 megohms. Great. There's also a greater than 10 gigohm setting. So if we hit uh, this button here. Okay, so now the input resistance to this should be 10 gigohms. All right, so let's go over here and measure its nano siemens. Uh, there. All right. And I can't wiggle and I can't move and I have to let it settle. 0.09. 0 0.09. Okay. So 0 0.09 nano is 11.1 gig ohms. So that's measuring 11.1 gig ohm input resistance now. Okay. Let's see what the Keithley does. Let's see what the Keithley does. Can't move, I can't move. 0.29 nano Siemens. 0 0.25. 0 0.24. 0.23, we'll call it 0.23. Okay, 0.23 nano Siemens is four gig ohms. I think this one, I think this one can do better on a good day. Maybe I'm not measuring it quite right. Let me flip these around. There we go, there we go. Look at that, 0 0.01 nano Siemens. 0 0.01 nano Siemens. Yeah. Okay, let's do this in the forward direction. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it makes a big difference in reverse or forward. I don't remember what direction I did this one in. Yeah, this one is still, uh, still that. So this one is 0 0.01 nano, well, as much as this can go. 0 0.01 nano is uh, 100 gig ohms. So this one is measuring 100 gig ohms at least. It's a rounding error on this machine, right? So this thing is almost infinite input impedance. I forget what the spec is on this. I don't know if it's tera ohm or something, but it's a super, super high spec on the input input impedance of the uh, of the Keithley. Uh, it does seem to be. Uh, polarity dependent though, which I didn't, I didn't quite know. Maybe it's, maybe it's another setting I have. I have averaging and on and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. So a couple things we learned is this thing can measure nano Siemens, which is really, really cool. Didn't know that. Thank you, viewer. Um, and uh, the uh, Keithley is way better good than the, uh, than the HP as far as if you want to do a, kind of an electrometer type input. Uh, input uh. Now this thing should be really good. Um, let's see, this thing should be super good. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn him on. Um, he actually is an electrometer. I can turn these guys off. I imagine this guy's going to measure 0 0.01 as well. Let's see here. Input. Input. Let's see here. Let's put him on uh, volts. Put him on a volts measurement here. Okay. Oh, no. He when when he's set to a measure volts, he's 100. He's 10 megohm input as well. He will do. Uh, a 10 nanoamp full scale range on the bottom end. So he has super high uh, current measurement device uh, readings. But if he's on the, oops, if he's on the volt reading, he is also a hundred, uh, I mean, a, a 10 megohm, 10 megohm input impedance as well, which is very standard for uh, uh, voltmeters. Actually, uh, I have a fluke voltmeter in my office that's uh, 
oh, I don't remember the number now. It's a Fluke 4.4 or something or other. Um, and uh, it also defaults to super high input impedance. And you you measure something and then you, you come back a day later and the, the measurement is still showing exactly on the screen because it has no leakage current at all in it. So that's kind of a little bit disturbing. So they put that 10 mega ohm input impedance on these devices just so you have a tiny bit of leakage so your your fluctu your your readings will go to zero if if there's nothing there instead of staying where they were you want them to actually go to zero so that's why they kind of standardize on a 10 mega ohm input impedance anyway there we go a video for the day